I'll bring it in an unusual way. I haven't revealed, and I'm not going to reveal what the subject is. We'll find that as we go through. <laughs> going on a, a kind of journey of discovery, we'll just pick some things out of the Bible and we'll see where we're going. And I think you'll find before long that you can see where we're heading. The only clue that I will give, or two clues perhaps, is that you'll see clearly that we're living right in the center of um, one or two signs of the end times. And we'll comment on that later on. Let's begin with Mark chapter 10. We'll be led to start with by the word. Mark chapter 10, between verses 13 and 16. <coughs> Mark 10, verse 13. And they brought young children to Jesus for him to touch them, and his disciples rebuked those who brought them. But when Jesus saw it, he was much displeased and said to them, let the little children come to me, and forbid them not, for as such is the kingdom of God. Truly I say to you, whoever shall not receive the kingdom of God like a little child, he shall not enter therein. And he took them up in his arms, put his hands upon them, and blessed them. We can see in this scripture just how precious children and little children are to Jesus. We don't know how many children there were. If we go back to verse 13, they just said that they brought young children to Jesus. We don't know how many. I went back and, and read earlier to see where he was, and I just couldn't get a, a grip for how many children there might have been. But there were enough, I would suggest, possibly quite a lot. And in verse 16, he took them up in his arms. <laughs> How many did he take up in his arms? If it was just a few, the Bible would say he picked a few up in his arms. If it was one or two, it would say one or two. I think he picked a lot of children up in his arms. And I think we get from this so much of Jesus' love for children and little children. And now we'll go to Genesis chapter 1. And we'll stay in Genesis for a little while. Genesis chapter 1, verses 27 and 28. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. And God blessed them, and God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply, and replenish the earth, and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. So now we're getting to see what, what God thinks about children. Did he really have to tell Adam and Eve to multiply? But he did. So... He made a point of emphasising that he wanted them to have children. Children are that important to God. Let's move on to chapter 9 in Genesis. Verses 27 and 28. No. <laughs> yes, it is. Um, Genesis 9, it's verse 1, I'm sorry. <laughs> That's a, yeah, it makes sense. <laughs> Genesis 9, verse 1. And God blessed, this is after the flood, and God blessed Noah and his sons and said to them, Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth. So here we have a, a similar message. He's, he's reminding Noah and, and Noah's sons and Noah's daughters-in-law that he wants them to have many children. Still in Genesis chapter 22. Verses 
verses 15 to 17. And the angel of the Lord called to Abraham out of heaven the second time and said, By myself have I sworn, says Yahweh, for because you have done this thing and have not withheld your son, your only son, that in blessing I will bless you, and in multiplying I will multiply your seed, as the stars of heaven, and as the sand which is on the seashore, and your seed shall possess the gate of his enemies. Abraham had just been stopped from having to sacrifice his son Isaac on, on, on the altar, his miracle son, who he'd had to wait so long for. He was expecting to have to, to sacrifice him, but the angel called out, um, and stopped, stopped him having to, to do that. And he was told also, um, where are we? That he will multiply his seed like the stars and like the sand, like the stars of heaven and the sand which is on the seashore. So God's again saying, multiplication. Keep in Genesis, just a little further on, 26, <coughs> verses 1 to 4. And there was a famine in the land beside the first famine that was in the days of Abraham. And Isaac went to Abimelech, the king, king of the Philistines, to Gerar. And Yahweh appeared to him and said, do not go down into Egypt, live in the land which I shall tell you of. Sojourn in this land, and I will be with you, and I will bless you. For to you and to your seed I will give all these countries, and I will perform the oath which I swore to Abraham your father. And I will make your seed to multiply like the stars of heaven, and I will give to your seed all these countries, and in your seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. And once again, God is giving the same message. A little bit further on in the same chapter, have a look at verses 23 and 24. This is about Isaac. He went up from there to Beersheba, and Yahweh appeared to him the same night and said, I am the God of Abraham, your father. Fear not, for I am with you and will bless you. And guess what he said? I will multiply your seed for my servant Abraham's sake. And when God says something twice, it's pretty important. So, and we're getting the same message, aren't we? Let's go over to Genesis 35. I'm building up a picture, although it's a bit repetitive. Genesis 35, verses 9 to 11. And God appeared to Jacob again when he came out of Padan Aram and blessed him. And God said to him, your name is Jacob, your name shall no more, I'll start it again, your name shall not be called any more Jacob, but Israel shall be your name. And he called his name Israel. Amen. And God said to him, I am God Almighty, be fruitful and multiply, a nation and a company of nations shall come from you, and kings shall come out of your loins. Jacob ended up with four wives and a lot of children, didn't he? And since God could see the end from the beginning, he didn't need to tell him to go and multiply, be fruitful and multiply. Jacob was pretty good at that. <laughs> but he still said it. And it, it seems to me that God's heart is for lots of children. I know he was developing a race, but he, he obviously loves children. Now we'll go on to Exodus, chapter, 20, verse, chapter 21, starting at verse 22, going to 25. If men strive and hurt a woman who is pregnant, so that she loses her baby, and yet no mischief follows, he shall surely be punished, according to that which the woman's husband will lay upon him, and he shall pay as the judges determine. 
and if any mischief follows, then you shall give life for life, eye for eye, tooth for tooth, hand for hand, foot for foot, burning for burning, wound for wound, stripe for stripe. So here we have some of God's law, and he's laying down severe punishment for anyone who causes a pregnant woman to lose a baby. He doesn't want pregnancy to be interrupted or terminated. Amen. And we see from verse 23 that it's serious enough for the death sentence. Now let's go to Leviticus. It's the next book, I think. Yeah. 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 Chapter 20. Verses 1 to 5. And Yahweh spoke to Moses, saying, Again, you shall say to the children of Israel, Whoever he is of the children of Israel, or of the strangers that sojourn in Israel, that gives any of his seed to Molech, he shall surely be put to death. The people of the land shall stone him with stones, and I will set my face against that man, and will cut him off from among his people, because he has given of his seed to Molech, to defile my sanctuary, and to profane my holy name. And if the people of the land in any way hide their eyes from the man when he gives of his seed to Molech and do not kill him, then I will set my face against that man and against his family and will cut him off and all that go whoring after him to commit whoredom with Molech from among their people. As I understand it, the, the idol of the false god Molech required little babies to be sacrificed in the fire as part of a fertility rite. The whole thing was pretty evil and pretty grotesque. And God says no. He loves little children so much that he writes this in his law. And he ex seems to expect, in verse 4, that the perpetrator is to be killed. 20 verse 4. If the people, of verse 4, if the people of the land in any way hide their eyes from the man when he gives of his seed to Molech, then do not kill him. So God's expecting the perpetrator to be killed. Let's go into Ezekiel. That's quite a way on before Daniel, isn't it? Ezekiel 23. Verses 36 to 39. Yahweh said moreover to me, Son of man, will you judge a hola and a holabar? And we need to go to verse 4 to see who they are. And in verse 4 we find that a hola is Samaria and Jerusalem is a holabar. So where we are, verse 36. So Yahweh said moreover to me, Son of man, will you judge Samaria and Jerusalem? Yes, declare to them their abominations, that they have committed adultery, and, the, and blood is in their hands, and with their idols have they committed adultery, and have also caused their sons, whom they gave birth to me, to pass for them through the fire, to devour them. Moreover, this they have done to me, they have defiled my sanctuary in the same day and have profaned my Sabbaths. For when they had killed their children as offerings to their idols, then they came the same day into my sanctuary to profane it, and lo, thus have they done in the midst of mine house. So God has to tell Ezekiel to judge Samaria and Jerusalem for killing their children as offerings to idols. God doesn't ignore the killing of babies. He condemns it once it's stopped. So at this point we're going to deviate slightly because up to now we've been seeing what Jesus what Jesus' views are of children and little children and we've seen what God's views are on children and little children and we've seen what God's law says. Now we're going to see what man's response has been to that. 
How has man responded to these serious things that God has said about children? And we'll start with what we can find in the Bible, and then we'll go on very briefly to discuss what man's doing today. So in the Bible, we'll go to Exodus chapter 1. Verses 15 to 17 and 22, the last one. So that's Exodus chapter 1 from verse 15. And the king of Egypt spoke to the Hebrew midwives, of which the name of the one was Shifra and the name of the other Puah. And he said, Will you do the office of a midwife to the Hebrew women and see them on the stalls? If it's a son, then you shall kill him, but if it's a daughter, then she shall live. But the midwives feared God, and did not do as the king of Egypt commanded them, but saved the men children alive. Now going to 22. And Pharaoh charged all his people, saying, Every son that is born you shall throw into the river, and every daughter you shall save alive. Egypt's king Pharaoh tried to kill every Hebrew boy and in the end he was probably entirely successful apart from Moses um, and Moses' brave parents kept Moses as a baby until they couldn't keep him any longer and until God could rescue him in a, in a most incredible way and there we see the devil's plans at work through Pharaoh his plans, his desire of course is to kill children. Now let's go to 2 Chronicles, chapter 28. Chronicles 28. Ahaz was, was 21 years old when he began to reign, and he reigned for 16 years in Jerusalem, but he did not do that which was right in the sight of Yahweh, like David his father. For he walked in the ways of the kings of Israel, and made also molten images to Baalim. Moreover, he burnt incense in the valley of the son of Hinnom, and burnt his children in the fire, after the abominations of the heathen whom Yahweh had driven out before the children of Israel. He sacrificed also and burned incense in the high places and on the hills and under every green tree. Ahaz should have known better. As a king, he could have had any one of his people read to him um, what was written in the scrolls, the law that was written in the scrolls. Let's go to chapter 33 now in 2 Chronicles. Verses 1 to 6. <coughs> 2 Chronicles 33. Manasseh was 12 years old when he began to reign, and he reigned 55 years in Jerusalem. But he did, he did that which was evil in the sight of Yahweh, like the abominations of the heathen whom Yahweh had driven out before the children of Israel. For well, he built again the high places which Hezekiah his father had broken down, and he reared up altars for Baalim and made groves and worshipped all the stars of heaven and served them. Also he built altars in the house of Yahweh, of which the Yahweh had said, In Jerusalem shall my name be forever. And he built altars for all the stars of heaven in the two courts of the house of Yahweh. And he caused his children to pass through the fire in the valley of the son of Hinnom, also he observed times and used enchantments and used witchcraft and dealt with the familiar spirit and with wizards. He did much evil in the sight of Yahweh to provoke him to anger. And there's another one who could very easily, he should have known better, he could very easily have had the, the scrolls read to him and he would have found in there what God had to say. Now we'll go to Matthew chapter 2. Verses 13 
to 16. And when they had all departed, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream, saying, Arise, and take the young child Jesus and his mother, and flee into Egypt, and remain there until I bring you word. For Herod will seek, to keep, will seek the young child to destroy him. When he arose, he took the young child and his mother by night, and departed into Egypt, and was there until the death of Herod, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Out of Egypt have I called my son. So there we, we have Herod, who killed every child. It says here every child. But his interest would have been in every boy, um, every boy child under the age of, age of two, hoping to kill Jesus. Praise God, he failed in that. Mm -hmm. But he caused an awful lot of problems up to that point. So there we have what we can find in the Bible about man's response in the light of God's position. And now what's man's response today? In complete rebellion and complete disregard to God's word and disregard to his law and complete disregard to man's conscience, man has changed laws around the world such that abortion is so-called legal in a large part of the world. So what we have is a revelation of God's love for little children and a revelation of the devil's plans to use man to try to kill them, thereby causing man to sin and be cut off from God and worthy of the death sentence. One sign of the end times is that iniquity will abound. That's Matthew 24, 12. And also they will come a falling away first then that son of that man of sin will be revealed the son of perdition. That's two Thessalonians one three. And what amazes me is that worldwide we've had to come to accept legalized murder of children. Babies. It just had amazing. We just had to accept it. What can we do about it? We'll come to that in a minute. The email from Israel was from pro-life. That's how it started. And here's some statistics. If we take Israel first of all, they have 160,000 live births every year and 45,000 abortions, so there would be 200,000, 205,000, there were 205,000 pregnancies, and a fifth of them don't make it. If we go to the UK, um, the statistics, I'll ask whether we might be able to get this up on the internet after I've finished. The statistics for the UK, which run from 1922, to 2013, although there's only one country that starts in 1922. <coughs> Israel started in 48, and a lot of them started in the 60s, 70s, and 80s, because statistics weren't available before, and they weren't, some of them just weren't doing this. But the UK has had 8 million abortions. We'll just pick out a few. Ukraine, 9 million. Turkey, 3 million. Spain, nearly 3 million. Poland, 6 million. Netherlands, 1.5 million. Hungary, 6 million. Germany, 4 million. France, 7 million. Czechoslovakia, 3.5 million. Cuba, 5 million. Canada, 3.5 million. Bulgaria, nearly 6 million. And a little bit higher up in the league table, Vietnam 28 million, wow. America 56 million, wow. Romania 22 million, South Korea 18 million, Japan 48 million, wow. 
India, 22 million, Germany, 4 million, France, I think I've given some of these, haven't I? Mm -hmm. um, now, the top league, did I give America 56 million? Yeah. 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 Russia and USSR, 335 million. Wow. That's just over a third of a billion. And China, at the top of the lot, 369 million, wow. which is significantly over a third of a billion. Worldwide, 1 billion, 19.4 million in 95 countries. These figures are just too too big to grasp. I may have said before, when I was at school, there were a thousand children. I never saw the thousand children altogether. But if I had, it's, it's difficult for me to think of in terms of a thousand. So if I just think in terms of a thousand, a school with a thousand children in, a million is a thousand of those schools. A billion is a million of those schools. This is vast. And it's so vast, I can't personally come to grips with these figures. So when you bring it down to an estimated current global monthly average, it's 1.1 million. Still too big for me. So let's bring it down, if I got the maths right, to a minute. 25 per minute. That's one every two seconds. If I've been speaking for 20 minutes, I may have gone over that. If I have, that's 500 in that short time. Yeah. If we spend two hours here tonight, that's 3,000 in two hours. It is unbelievable. Yeah. We don't see it. God does. Yeah. That's just the official one, though, isn't it? Yeah. You know, thousands probably you don't hear about. It's back to people. <coughs> so what? What is our response? What can our response be? Some will be called to challenge governments. Some will be called to support and help pro-life groups. Some, and I pray there'll be more, will actually come and befriend young women who want to have an abortion and will say to them, have the baby and I'll adopt it. I pray that that will happen more and more. But all of us can pray. Mm. 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 Thank you.